Let's look at a chemical reaction here, the dimerization of NO2 to form N2O4. And if I tell you the reaction is spontaneous at 25 degrees C, what can you predict about the enthalpy change for that chemical reaction? Is it greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero? Think about that for a minute and make a selection. Let's look at a possible explanation for each answer. A, delta S is less than zero since the number of particles decreases. So it must be exothermic to also be spontaneous. B, spontaneous reactions do not release or absorb heat, so delta H is zero. Or C, bonds are formed, so it must absorb energy, so delta H must be positive. Think about those three and make a selection. We're looking at the dimerization of NO2 to form N2O4. And we're told it's spontaneous, that is, delta G is negative at 25 degrees C. When we look at this reaction, we can predict a couple things about the entropy and the enthalpy. The entropy, for instance, in this case decreases. And how do I know that? Well, the number of particles decrease. And if the number of particles decrease, the number of accessible microstates has to decrease as well. So if the number of particles decreases, or the volume decreases, or the temperature decreases, all else being equal, those are decreases in entropy as well. So a decrease in entropy means what effect on delta G? Well, a decrease in entropy, delta S is negative, less than zero. So that means this is a positive contribution. Minus T delta S is a positive contribution to delta G. So this doesn't favor, entropically, this is not favored. The entropic contribution tends to make delta G positive. So we have to have an enthalpic contribution that's negative. That's the only thing that can make delta G negative. So delta H must be less than zero. This must be an exothermic reaction in order for it to be spontaneous. And that exothermic contribution must be greater than the entropic temperature contribution for an overall negative delta G. So in this case, delta H less than zero is the appropriate answer. Now, I should point out that you probably could have predicted that anyway, because NO2 going to N2O4, the only thing that's happening here is the formation of a bond. NO2 monomers become N2O4 dimers. A single bond is formed. And if all that's happened is a bond formation, then that must release energy. Forming bonds always releases energy. Breaking bonds always requires energy. So you could have approached this from two directions. In either case, you get an exothermic chemical reaction.